Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on this great Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms, all of our, our uh, biological moms, adoptive moms, foster moms, spiritual moms. Amen. Amen. You guys are in for a treat today. I'm telling you, my wife is going to bring the heat today. Amen. Amen. Woo. Say, Sherry, bring the heat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She does not like to speak in front of people, but she is ready to go. She is confident. She woke up this morning, changed everything, and um, so it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. Praise the Lord. And uh, so we're going to do some different things today. Um, but what we're going to start out with today is we're going to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because he's worthy of our praise. That's right. He's worthy of all of our honor. And I was just praying with the people in the back. I, I, I just, it's so incredible how God is so creative that he chose women to bring life into the world, and to be able to nurture life in the world. Amen? That's right. And that's a powerful thing. And really, um, some of the kids are in here today, and I want you guys to listen up. AJ, Isaiah, Allie, Alyssa. You know, we, we have to listen to what uh, the, the, the lady of the house is going to say today. Amen? Yeah. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your faithfulness to us. We thank you, God, for this, uh, this day that you have made. And we will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And, Lord God, we just pray that you would show yourself so real, so strong in this place, God. God, it's, a, it's just a, a, a little bit of what we can do in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes to worship you. 10 or 15 minutes of our life to be able to stand up, put a smile on our face, put our hands together, maybe even sway a little bit. And, and, and just really, really focus on you. And God, if we're worried about what people think of us, let's just close our eyes. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to think about anything, but just you and God. Amen? Just you and God. Why don't you stand up with me today? Just you and God today. Miss Rachel? Hey. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. yes. Who's ready to praise? <laughs> Woohoo! We are glad you're here worshiping with us. And we are going to jump right in. season we're in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. I'll praise cause I'm sure. And I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. And praise when surrounded cause praise is the water my enemies drown in come on let's sing it out as long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord oh my soul Shouts that brings Jericho down. 
know that he is amazing grace. There is amazing grace for us. What he did on the cross, what he is doing in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just keep on praising. Amen. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings hallelujah who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings yeah this is amazing grace, this is unveiling love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for
chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings yeah this is a today. Come on. Praise the Lord. Have a seat in the presence of the Lord. We're going to show an announcement video. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We are going to show an announcement video brand new off the press. Here we go. Can you see like that he has boogers? Okay. Good morning and welcome to Grace in Community Church. We're a church that longs to know God, make him known, embrace his grace, and extend his glory. We are so glad that you're here worshiping with us today. I'm Pastor Rachel, and this is Judah. We have some announcements for you. Monday nights, we have Hope for the Family at 7 o'clock. They meet right down in the fellowship room. They go through boundaries and holistic living in Jesus, and all are welcome to join at any time. We also have Aroma for ages 18 to 30. We also meet at 7 o'clock in the back building, and we enjoy casual fellowship and community. Tuesdays, we have Grace Moms for our mamas with babies and school-age kids. We meet at 9.30, also down in the fellowship room. Tuesday evenings, we have Amigos for our, <laughs> our men ages 18 and up, and they meet every other week at 6.30. Wednesdays, we have morning prayer from 10 a.m. to 11, where we intercede for so many areas and all are welcome to join us. Again, we meet right downstairs in the fellowship room. Wednesday evenings at 6.30, we have Bible study right here in the sanctuary. We're going through the book of Acts with Pastor Mark. And then we also have commissioned youth group for ages 12 to 18. We meet in the back building that time as well. Now, we also have events that take place throughout the month. Things like Next Generation Prayer on Monday afternoons throughout the month, and they also visit the nursing home in Lancaster. 
Widows Group, they meet the second Sunday of the month. Flourish, our group for ages 10 to 17. We try to meet a couple times a month. And finally, our Grace Gen group. That group is for ages 20 to 40, and we typically meet on the last Sunday of the month. Now, you're going to want to check our complete Grace and Community Church calendar for when these groups and ministries take place, as well as stay tuned to email and social media updates. Now, if you're visiting here for the first, second, or maybe even third time, and you have not received a welcome gift, we would love to give you one today. Please see Ms. Donna at the large table in the foyer to receive your gift and maybe even stay plugged in by writing down your information so we can stay connected with you. If you want to give of your tithes and offerings this morning, we have a few ways of doing so. We have two wooden boxes located in the back of our sanctuary doors where you can place your check, cash, and envelope. And then you can also hover your phone um, over our QR code, over the slide. And of course, you can give via our square kiosk in the foyer with your credit or debit card. Thank you so much for giving and sowing into the kingdom. One last thing, we always have Grace and Community shirts available in the foyer for just $5. They say God is still happening and they're a great way to represent Jesus and our church in our community. Now enjoy today's service. I got two questions. One is, where, where did Judah go? She put him down and he's like crawling. He's probably in the back of the building by now. And second of all, I mean, I feel every time Rachel does the announcements, I feel like I'm on an airplane and she is giving me directions, you know, where to sit and where to get off if there's an emergency, right? God is so good. He's so faithful. Um, I want to share just a few thoughts today and then I'm going to introduce Sherry. Uh, She's going to bring the message today. Praise the Lord. But in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, it says this. This is the promise. I like promises, don't you? This is the promise, that if you, honor, if you honor your father and your mother, yours will be a long life and full of blessing. How many of you want long life and full of blessing? We need to honor our mamas. And as I woke up this morning... You know, I thought, about, I thought about Mother's Day. I thought about my mom. I'm going to share about it in a minute. But, you know, I, I also thought about people that may have lost their mom or maybe they've had a bad mom. But you need to still honor your mom if you want your life to be long and you want it to be full of blessing. Here's what I think. I believe that, that the church needs times of celebration. And Mother's Day is one of them. So we celebrate. We celebrate moms. We celebrate their life. I believe we truly need to celebrate our mothers, you know, biological mothers. Again, foster moms, adoptive moms, spiritual moms. We need to celebrate them. Let me, let me share a few reasons why. Number one, first we need to honor those who honor is due. Romans chapter 13 verse 7 tells us that we are to honor we are to really honor those that are doing our moms and the, and the women that are either spiritual moms, adoptive moms, biological moms, or foster moms. They need to be honored. Can we give our moms a hand right now? Can we give them a hand? Can we honor them right now? I want to I honor, honor my wife, uh, a mother of seven children. And every time I think about it, I, 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 I just, I need a nap. And, uh, you know, because she has, she has really sacrificed. She has really given of herself. Um, and there's moms that I'm looking around the room, and, and, and I just know what it cost. And I know um, what, what, what you have given to be able to raise up the next generation. For those that may not be able to have children, how, how you've invested in the spirituality of, of people, even in our own church. And so I honor you. Uh, I remember my mom on this day. This is our first Mother's Day, um, you know, without my mom. And she was a champion. She was, she was my champion. She was a champion of life. And, um, but, you know, I, I just know that she's celebrating with Jesus right now. I, I just know it. I, with everything that's within me, I know it. And so I honor her and for all the investment that she made in me and my sister Nancy and, and others. And, uh, and so praise the Lord for that. Secondly... 
our children, Tobias, our children, good to see you, our children need to know that in a troubled world, we often, we often need to have times of celebration because the world is hard out there, but we need to, we need to have celebration times. We need to have times where we, we celebrate. And so I want you to go into, into your, when you're in your home, I want you to celebrate your mom. When she's telling you to, to make your bed, celebrate your mom. When she tells you to take out the garbage, celebrate your mom. When she tells you to brush your teeth for the fourth time, brush your teeth and celebrate your mom. Amen. It's important. It's important. You know, over the last couple of years, I have shared um, some funny things. Two of them are worth repeating. I'm going to share them now. You know you are a good mother when you are up each night till 10 p.m. vacuuming, dusting, wiping, washing, drying, loading, uploading, shopping, cooking, driving, flourishing, flushing, ironing, sweeping, picking up, changing sheets, changing diapers, bathing, helping with homework, paying bills, budgeting, clipping coupons, folding clothes, putting to bed, dragging out of bed, brushing, chasing, buckling, feeding them, not you, plus swinging, playing baseball, bike riding, pushing trucks, cuddling dolls, rollerblading, basketball, football, catch, bubbles, sprinkles, slides, nature walks, coloring, crafts, jumping rope, plus Raking, trimming, planting, edging, mowing, gardening, painting, and walking the dog. You get up at 5.30 a.m., and you have no time to eat, sleep, drink, or go to the bathroom, and yet you still have managed to gain 10 pounds. But my personal favorite over the years, my personal favorite is this. Here's my prayer for every single mother in the room, whether you are, again, all the different categories of moms. Be the kind of mom... That when your feet hit the floor each morning, the devil says, oh, snap, she's up. <laughs> Be that kind of mom. Be that kind of mom. You know, that you make a significant difference. Moms, we love you, and uh, we cherish, uh, you know, we really cherish you. And I know that my children um, were, were making a homemade uh, meal for my wife. They've all chipped in. And we're having uh, Greek food. Um, and no, you're not welcome to come because we have uh, a full house at our house. <laughs> Sherry, would you come and share the word of God today? And um, again, would you give a warm welcome to my wife? Let me pray. One more. Father, bless my wife today. God, give her the words to speak. God, give her the anointing to break every yoke. God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear that which the Spirit of God is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. That was such a warm welcome. As Pastor said, this is usually not my lane, but I did um, agree. Can we do one thing? We flashed a bench up on the, but you didn't explain it. So, Caleb, would you bring that photo back, please? You can't really see it, but it says, who, who said that mom would cry within two seconds? <laughs> <laughs> it says, in memory of Nancy Lee Walker, champion of life. This is by our cross down there. And as a family, when we were thinking of this special woman, we had thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to have her memory be around us? And so it's down by the cross where you can sit and you can meditate and just, um, we're just so grateful that we could have that living, that memory there to um, just to thank God. Thank God for what she's done in our life, what she imparted in us, and now what we can continue to share with others. So, um, thank you. So, uh, happy Mother's Day. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted that my biggest fan club is scattered throughout. It's all these kids. Wave your hands, kids. Thank you. They are my biggest supporters, and they overlook a multitude of 
mistakes and things that uh, perhaps uh, Pastor Sherry does downstairs, but we have a great time together, so I love that they're up here with us. They've got their bright, shining faces, their squirming little bodies, their needs to go to the bathroom about 20 times in a seated um, place. So, children, I have important words to share for you, to you, so as you can, to look, to look. Ears, sometimes we touch our ears to remember to listen, because guess what? One day you will be mothering and you will be fathering. One day you will be managing at your job, standing for God's principles, sharing your faith with others, making a difference. So children, you are valuable. You are most precious to God and your family. So Thank you for being part of what we are doing here today. So when Pastor asked me to share, can I just let you know I wasn't the first choice? <laughs> no, I'm always the first choice. He always asks me, and I do sometimes get nervous, and I decline. Um, so this time around, I said, yes, I am going to be obedient, and I am going to share what God has put on my heart. And the word value came to my heart. So for a few weeks, I've been mulling over this word value. And no, it's not the store down the street in Alden. The word value has a really um, deep meaning. From the beginning, our Father in heaven sees us as good. It tells us in Genesis that God made mankind in his own image, male and female. He created them intricately made. No two of us are alike. Today, be reminded as I continue that everyone in this room is valuable. Men, women, children, you are all valuable. As Pastor said earlier, today we are going to take time and we are going to celebrate women, especially in that realm of mothers, of being a mother. So that word value means of superior quality, of merit, of importance. Those are some really good descriptive terms. So as you think of yourself, that's how God sees us. Yes, each of us. So much that he gave his son Jesus for our salvation. It always boils back down to that. If God gave Jesus for our salvation, how much worth do we have? So the Bible lists several women in the Old Testament, such as Jochebed, Deborah, Miriam, Esther, and Rahab. In the New Testament, we see Mary, the mother of Jesus, Martha, Mary Magdalene, Priscilla, and Lydia, who are hosts to the Apostle Paul, Dorcas, otherwise known as Tabitha, who was a um, very well-loved community worker. We also see that there was the woman with the issue of blood and the Samaritan woman. These are just a few. The list is quite long. These are those who perhaps were behind the scenes and did many things to serve God and their families. Some of them are a little bit more in the forefront. What I love about the Bible is the truths of what I said earlier, that Jesus loved us so much that he gave his son for each and every person on, the, on this earth, that you see this thread of breaking through all kinds of barriers in such a way that we have the opportunity to believe and accept Jesus Christ and know our true worth. Jesus broke through the cultural barrier of his time in such a way that women not only believed he was the Messiah, but became life followers, passing the legacy on to their children. We see this in 1 Timothy. Paul is commissioning this young man, Timothy, to travel with him. And as I was doing a little bit of research on Timothy, he was probably about 15 years old when he started being with Paul. And he was known by Paul because of the ministry he was doing in his own hometown. So he had already started developing a reputation. 
We know that his grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice, were also believers. They had such an impact on Timothy that they recorded that in the epistles, right? Um, Paul writes to remember what Eunice and Lois impacted in Timothy's life. Now think about the timeline of that. The time of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection in this encounter is only about 20 years. So the legacy of these two women probably started while Jesus was still walking on the earth. They were so impacted by Jesus that they are changing everything that they used to live, and they poured into Timothy this legacy of the truth of Jesus Christ. We see that there are then how many, there are First and Second Timothy, two epistles written by Timothy that had Eunice and Lois not received the truth, not poured into this young man, those epistles, maybe they would not be in existence today. What a legacy. We each get to have a legacy as well. My grandmothers became believers as Italian immigrants who raised their children to be followers of Jesus and that they have impacted their families to follow Jesus. Mothers, never, never underestimate the influence you have on your children, your families, and your friends. You may be the first to break generational unbeliefs, break generational habits that are preventing people from getting to know Jesus and curses and be able to glorify God in your families. We don't get to see perhaps what's down the future, but maybe should the Lord tarry, if there are books written 10, 15, 30 years from now, perhaps your legacy is going to be part of this person who is bringing the gospel, bringing the change to the world, because of your faithfulness. So consider their courage. When you think about the times, they were living in Roman-occupied world. And specifically in Jesus' time, it's Roman-occupied Judea. It was not a place of safety, nor respect, or rights for women. So in many, these women are really, as they are loving Jesus, as they are walking forward in him, these mothers of faith, are going against the grain. The Roman women also were not treated very well. So that's going to bring me to talking about one specific woman, and we can find her in John 4, starting in verse 1. This is the account of Jesus interacting with the Samaritan women. Most of us are familiar with this passage, and actually... I was in children's ministry last week, so on my way to visit my parents, I listened to Pastor's sermon, and he referenced this whole passage. I'm like, oh, he's got my passage. What am I supposed to do? And I said, you know what? We're going to keep going with it because there's so much in this passage, and you're going to see in time that it's actually going to um, go, you know, correlate with what Pastor taught last week on uh, evangelism. So let's read the text. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. 
Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have said, you have well said. I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, his disciples came, and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, Come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. I went a little farther, and my um, translation might be slightly different than what you saw. But that is a very packed passage, and I'm going to touch on a few things. Jesus sees the value of this woman and her spiritual needs. He is traveling. He has already been ministering. He is tired. Most of the time, as I think we've heard in the past, it tells us that Jewish people did not travel through Samaria. They did the roundabout way because there was um, angst between the Samaritans and the Jewish people. In some of what I've read, Jesus very strategically decides that he is going to enter into a place that he perhaps would not be welcome But he has a plan. There is something that he knows that he needs to do. So there he is. He is sitting. Imagine he is sitting at the well. He is thirsty. It is probably hot. And this woman comes, and she starts to draw water. And we see that it's the sixth hour, which could be about noon, probably very hot out. There is nobody at the well. It's just the two of them. From what we understand, the women came to the well either early in the day or late in the evening, based, it was more comfortable, and they usually came in community. And so this woman is by herself, and there is Jesus. He begins to converse with her. You're thinking, what is the big deal? In our day and age today, we're conversing all the time. This is a big deal. She is a woman, and as I alluded to earlier, um, women definitely did not have some of the freedoms that we get to enjoy today. She is also a Samaritan, someone that, in her culture, they were not friends. And she is drawing water alone, indicating that she may have not been accepted by her community. 
There's a lot of reasons why scholars think she wasn't accepted. The bottom line is she's by herself, which means that her community might be very limited. Now, when I mean community, I mean people in her love circle, people who she had friends with. She was maybe invisible. Have you ever felt that way? As you're going in day in and day out, doing all that you're supposed to do, have you ever felt invisible? I have. Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, did. In fact, she was feeling so despondent, so um, invisible, that she cries out to God, and God actually, she actually calls him El Roy, the God who sees me. So today, women, understand not only are you valuable, but God sees you. The details of your life, the investment you are making, he sees you with compassion. He sees you as a daughter with eyes of love. He sees you as one. He wants to be very much a part of your life. So as the dialogue continues, Jesus surprises her with his knowledge of her present living situation. He does not condemn her. He does, we don't even know if he even takes the cup of water. He does not even, you know, maybe he takes the water and you imagine if it were me, maybe I would have just, hey, give me my water and I turn away and, you know, I'm just thirsty, my flesh needs it, I've gotten what I need, I'm moving out of the situation. No, he begins to actually engage her and he begins to minister to her. He does not take the water and turn away. In fact, he begins to exchange conversation with her. They actually exchange theological beliefs. They begin to talk about how she perceives where to worship God. And he comes back and he shares with her. And also, he offers her at that moment living water. He took what was happening in her natural life drawing water, he engages her, they're communicating, and now he says, here, here's water that has eternity on it, water that you will never thirst again. Value, that is the value that God has for each and every one of us. I have to say, it is possible that she is the first person that Jesus directly says who he is. Because she asks him. You can see in verse 25, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. In 26, Jesus actually responds to her very bluntly, I am he, I who speak to you am he. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? It is an ordinary day for this woman. She is getting up. Uh, it's hot. I'm going to get water. I need to get water. It's another ordinary day. Suddenly, there she is at the well. It is no longer just an ordinary day. Jesus offers her living water. This person, this man, is engaging her respectfully. This man is giving her something that is changing her life for eternity. Jesus compassionately and respectfully confirms that he is the Messiah, and it results in her personal belief, best day of her life. She excitedly and courageously tells not just one person, not just two person, doesn't whisper to um, where she lives, hey, I met this man today. No, she excitedly tells her whole town. Her encounter with Jesus is so life-changing that she forgets if she has any type of reputation in her town. She forgets if people thought she was invisible. She totally pushes it aside, and she invites the whole community to come and see the man who told me things I ever did. She also, in the spirit, picks up, because she calls him, are you a prophet? Like, the, in the spirit and in the 
in her intellect, the wheels are turning. She's understanding what is happening to her. It had to be amazing. And you know what was even more amazing? As she went and declared it, the men of the village came. They listened to her. They went to see Jesus. And she brought salvation to that whole town. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Can you understand the value that our Heavenly Father has for each of us? Just an ordinary day at the well becomes extraordinary. When Jesus shows up, the extraordinary day at work becomes an extraordinary day when Jesus shows up. I had the opportunity to share some of this with, at work a few times this past week. I work at Sisters. Uh, I'm an RN that works on the mother-baby unit. I specifically work with, um, you know, helping women feed their babies. And so I work with an all-woman crew. And so we're all like, it's Nurses Week, and so we're all like also tagging it on to um, Mother's Day. And so we ask each other, hey, what are you doing for Mother's Day? And, you know, we talk about different things that we might go do or what we're expecting. And usually I don't say much about that I am public speaking or that I am preaching. But this time I said, you know what, I'm going to take a little courage. I am just going to throw it out there and take the risk and say, hey, I'm going to get to speak at Mother's Day on Sunday. And believe it or not, it led to some people saying, oh, so what are you going to say? I'm like, oh. <laughs> I thought I'd be a little bit of a smarty and say, oh, I don't know. I'll come up with something. I said, no. The Lord had already given me the word value, and he had already given me this passage of the woman at the well. So I took the risk of sharing this account with a few different ones, pointing out the dignity that Jesus showed to the Samaritan woman touched their heart, how the living water Jesus offers is for all, especially those of us who feel that we're less than perfect, those who feel like we are not enough, those who are struggling in their everyday life. I pray that practicing on my listening friends planted seeds of hope and salvation. Amen. That's right. So, so moms, grandmas, spiritual moms, aunties, you are of incredible value. Today, I say thank you for your incredible sacrifice to the gifts that God has given you. And what do I mean by gifts? That's my other word for children. These children that are in the room, these children that you may rub up next to um, throughout your day and your life, that you get to influence, you get to love, and you get to care for. Some of those children may keep you up all night. Some of those you may be frantically jumping in the car because the child has claimed to run away from home and is running in the neighborhood, and you're in this big vehicle trying to search for the, for the child, hoping that nobody in the area can see you because how do you explain, oh, my child ran away, and I'm just trying to find him. <laughs> The one who sneaks a puppy into the house that you are caring for now for 10 years. Yes. Sebastian will be 10, I think. Children, if you're listening, uh-uh, don't. No. The list goes on. Everything from puking at your feet to volunteering your house to hosting college students. Or how about being a passenger as they're learning to drive? Seven times, people, seven times. All seven of them are now licensed driver, woohoo! No, Rachel and Jerry are not doing grandkids, just not happening. Yes, seven have uh, made their way through high school and working and going on with um, what God is directing them in their lives. So each of my children, I am just very proud of them and grateful for them. And each of you have memories. Each of you have stories of your upbringing. Some of those memories are full of laughter. Some of them, as Pastor mentioned earlier, are not so much. Some of them have been really difficult. Some of them have been lonely. Some of them might not have been um, perfect, as maybe you had wanted them to be. Some of you may have some regrets. I really want to encourage you to, number one, know your value before the Lord. Know that Jesus... Elroy sees you, and he 
welcomes you to take time to talk to him about that. Let him wash over your souls and give you hope, give you courage. <laughs> All the tears and the joy of saying yes to mothering. Once you start, it never ends. And that is a good thing. It looks different over time. Your responsibilities will change. Your impactfulness will be different. But keep on. Don't stop. There are people who need and want your wisdom, want your encouragement, want to know that they're not alone in the journey that they're on. Even if it's a smile, even if it's a hand on the shoulder saying, yeah, I've been there. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop loving on each other. I say it again, God values you, your investment, your sacrifices, your tireless scenes, your tireless behind the scenes activity. Do not stop loving, do not stop guiding and calling out to God. Even if you have not received the answers or results that you have been waiting for, keep praying, keep trusting God for the answers, stay in community, get, get together with some trusted people who can help hold up your hands and your arms. I want to close with the origins of this holiday. In 1858, Ann Jarvis, a mom, was passionate about making life better for families. She gathered other women to join her in work days, improving sanitation, san sanitation in Appalachia. During wartime and word in action, Ann Jarvis served the soldiers from both sides during the Civil War. She influenced others to do the same. These women, as they were mourning the loss of their husbands and son, came together, showing the fierce love and strength of mothers. Years later, her daughter, influenced by her mother's actions, fulfilled her mother's dream of having a day set aside to honor mothers. Anne was inspired not only by her mother's actions, but also by her spiritual legacy. She remembered her mother teaching about the women of the Bible who actively served. In the early 1900s, Mother's Day was birthed. Another woman, Susan B. Anthony, also had a great impact on women. Even though she did not have children of her own, this is a very impactful statement. She did not have children of her own and had been so impactful for our history, she said, sweeter than to have the joy of caring for our children of my own has it been to me to help bring about a better state of things for mothers generally so their unborn little ones could not be willed away from them. She stood in the gap for life. As you take time today, reflect on those women in your life that you see as courageous, fearless, sacrificial. These beautiful qualities have been put in us by our creator, God himself. Today, you are valued by God. Can I have all the, um, all the mothers, all the women, spiritual moms, biological moms, um, foster moms, adoptive moms, could you please stand? <clears throat> Pretty much is every woman. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray a blessing. I thank you, Lord God, for your impartation of value. Lord, what we just heard right now over the last few minutes, God, I pray that it would sink so deep into the hearts of every woman that's standing. And Lord God, whether they're biological moms, foster moms, adoptive moms, spiritual moms, God, I pray right now that you would stir up the gift of nurturing, that you would stir up, God, the gift and the calling that you've called them to be, God. And I pray, God, that uh, you would e erase all the memories of, of uh, anything bad, that your forgiveness would flow, 
mercy would flow. And God, I pray that they would turn their face right now towards heaven, turn their face towards the will of God, and that they would do the things that you've called them to do, God. I pray that you would strengthen them. And God, I pray that you would infuse right now the truth and the reality of how much you value each one of them right now, God. I pray, God, that you would move upon the men, move upon the, 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 the young boys, God, that we would, we would honor our ladies, that we would honor our mothers, God. We would honor those that are in a position of mothering, God. And I pray that we would understand in our church, in our families, in our culture of the value, the high value that you place on mothers. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Please be seated. We're going to show a quick video, and, uh, and then the worship team is going to come and, and uh, finish up our time in worship. Amen. Let's just pay attention to the video. Happy Mother's Day. What's one thing, Tobias and Ellie, that you love about your mom? <laughs> and does she take good care of you? Yeah. Does she let you do fun things? Yeah. Yeah, so your mom is special. Our mom is special because she has a servant's heart. She's always willing to help in any way that she can. She's one of the most patient people I know. She's also one of the strongest people I know. But at the same time, she's willing to be vulnerable and express her emotions because she knows that in our weakness, he is strong. And we wouldn't be here without her. Uh -huh. Mom is also quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Hi, church family. I am coming to you live from my secret hiding place. And you will hear voices on the other side of the door. Um, so I've been pondering being a mom. And I remember all the way back to my high school days uh, when we were asked to write down what we wanted to be when we grew up or what our occupation was going to be. And my answer was always the same. I truly just wanted to be a mom. So the Lord has really given me the desires of my heart with this one. And I have 12 children that call me mom and almost five children that call me grandmom. Um, I have been a biological mom, a stepmom, a foster mom, a spiritual mom, and I just love all of the titles. I'm so thankful for what God has done in my life. And if I give one piece of advice for Mother's Day, it's don't sweat the small stuff. Pick your battles. Happy Mother's Day. Love you all. Motherhood to me is my everything. It is my fulfilled purpose. I love being there for my kids and watching them grow and seeing them through all the different stages and just watching how their personalities are so different. Elise, she's more creative. Gavin, he's more active where he wants to climb and just do a bunch of different wild boy things. And I love that about them. I love being there to help guide them and mold them along the way into the beautiful people that they are. So that's why I love being a mother. And what do you love about your mom? I like when she takes me from places and takes me to get to some friends. Does she give you warm hugs? Yes. Yeah. yeah. My mom brings me to my dad. So my mom likes horses and she makes sure we get good horses, not ones that are lame. And she really loves our entire family, including my little brother. And she helps us with our horse lessons and gives other people lessons. And, and also she
she cooks for us and, and teaches you about God and teaches us God and stuff. And I love her. And I love her a lot. And then I talk a bit about my mom. So my mom likes horses and she Spirit to wash over us. So if you're able, would you stand? Thank you, Pastor Sherry, aka my mom, for that message this morning. Just very encouraging and life giving. And I believe that this time, these next few moments in worship, will be a response to what she shared. And if you're feeling like you need Jesus to see you in a, just a deep, and profound way today, whether you're a mama or you're not, this is the time. Spending time in worship and just connecting with the Holy Spirit is how we can feel seen and valued and let him speak to us. And we have to listen. Can you start playing? He just wants to speak truth. He wants to speak life over us this morning. These altars are always open. There's always a pastor ready to pray with you. It is a celebratory day, being Mother's Day, but it's also a chance to just, again, allow him to wash over you, bring healing to you. Maybe this is a painful day for you, and that's okay, but you don't have to stay there because we know who our Savior is. If your mama isn't here or you've had painful experiences with your mama, God can be mom and dad to you and heal and fill in those gaps and be your best friend, be your confidant, be your encourager. He's your champion. And there is a room full of incredible spiritual moms that if you need that touch this morning, just ask. They'll be there to give you a hug and an encouragement and a prayer. So Jesus, right now, we are just open and ready to receive what you have for these next few moments in response to the message that you laid on Pastor's heart to share with us. May we respond to this word and leave today feeling valued and seen like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your beautiful name that we speak the name of Jesus over ourselves, over our families, so that these things will take place by your power. In Jesus' name. Your love 
darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear and Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Peace Bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. At your name, still call the sea to still. The rage in me to still. Every wave at your name. darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus you silence fear Jesus, Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus breathe call these bones to live these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble.
There's some people in the room, and I know we're almost done. I'm going to finish right now, but there's some that have been gripped with fear recently. And I'm telling you, that word's for you. Just be free. The light has come. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. It's the Jesus in you. It's the Jesus in you, man. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for this uh, time today. Thank you for giving us the privilege of honoring our moms, the women that nourish, nurture. God, thank you for my wife sharing. God, thank you for the worship today. God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That you are still happening. You're still doing what you do best. Performing miracles, saving people healing people, setting people free, giving people purpose, encouraging us, imparting value. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. Have a great day.